Who are you talking about? Who's all right? Let me try that again to this side, to my right. Who's all right? The middle section, what is his name? Over here, who did you come to praise? Is he all right? Everybody say with me, I know he's all right. Hallelujah. While you remain standing, let us thank God for the choir and the praise team. For those wonderful selections. And they're going to be singing in our second service today as well. That service is at 3.30. The Lansing Spirituals are going to be with us also. We want everybody, everybody coming. If it's a sacrifice, make a sacrifice. Well, come on back and be with us as we enjoy this choir, these musicians, the Lansing Spirituals, Elder Michael Bell, and the Word of God on this afternoon at 3.30. You are welcome. So we honor the Lord today. We lift him up. We appreciate him for who he is and what he's doing and what he's going to do. Let us pray. Father, we honor you and we thank you for this opportunity that you have so graciously and wonderfully blessed us with. And we are able to come between these four walls and worship and assemble ourselves together to pray, to praise, and to proclaim the word. We pray, God, that your presence and that your anointing would rest upon us. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do and how you want to do it. Let your word be proclaimed under the anointing. Let it be spoken with clarity of speech. Give us all an ear to hear what your spirit is saying to the church. Help us, God, that we'll live for you. Help us, we'll be who you want us to be. Bring somebody to the place of true repentance that when the gospel message is proclaimed, God, that they'll repent, place their faith in Jesus Christ so they can be saved and delivered from uh, eternal condemnation and punishment. Lord, separated from you forever. Let that not be. Bring somebody to the wells of salvation and help all of us that will be strengthened, all of us that will be encouraged, all of us that will be lifted in you. Heal, deliver, and set free. These things we ask in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you. Everybody say, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just before you take your seats, shake hands with two or three people. Welcome them here to Power, Hope, and Grace. If you don't know them, introduce yourself. <laughs> Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your, your ear. love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice this is my prayer. Take joy, my King, in what you hear, oh Lord. Let it be a sweet, sweet 
praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we magnify your adorable name. You are our great, almighty, awesome, magnanimous, wonderful God, and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God bless you today. Let us prepare to look into the word of the Lord. Thank God for all of you that have come to join us here today, Power, Hope, and Grace Church. You are at a place where everybody is somebody. Jesus is the reason why. No goodness of our own, but it is because of him. Thank God for being able to celebrate the holiday seasons. Without further delay, we direct your attention to the Gospel of St. John chapter number one. In St. John chapter number one, we are revisiting a familiar passage of scripture today. Thank God again for all of the support and help of the PhD Urban Life Center and all of the workers and volunteers for their service on yesterday and for those that were reaching out and evangelizing souls and witnessing to them and inviting them to the house of God. God bless uh, all of you. And we do not take it light or for granted the help and the support that have been extended, that you have extended to the ministry all throughout this year of 2019. And just by way of a quick reminder, we do remind everyone of our uh, service, which will be the 31st of December at 10 o'clock. That would be in the PM, 10 o'clock at night, PM, on New Year's Eve, as we meet and gather together for our final service and close out this year and pray the new year in, if the Lord says the same. Now, of course, now if Jesus returned before then, I won't be here. So you all feel free to go along and whoever wanted to preach that night, uh, in your hands, you decide. Uh, I don't know if that's Sister Stephanie want to do her trial sermon that night. Oh, uh, she's looking around like, like which one? There's more than one Stephanie here. <laughs> All right, but uh, one day we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. <laughs> some kind of way, some kind of how. In St. John, the Gospel of, of, of St. John, chapter number one, verse number one, and we'll read verses one through verse five. And we are reminded by this portion of scripture. In verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. We read in your hearing St. John, Gospel, verses, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Uh, this passage is labeled by many writers and scholars and commentators as the prologue here in St. John chapter 1, verses 1 through verse number 18 in particular. Time would fail us to deal with all of the content of this uh, lesson, but we will try with the help of God in the next several minutes as he enables us to give some justice to what is written here. Here in this chapter lies a very powerful passage of scripture. It is one of the most clearest, one of the most awesome, yet mysterious passages in the Bible. It is all of that at the same time. It is uh, very clear and plain because the gospel writer writes in clear and plain terms. 
and he talks about the main character of the Bible. The main character of the Bible is God and his son, Jesus Christ. And in this passage, we are reminded of a few things. In verse number one of St. John chapter one, it says this, in the beginning was the word. So the gospel writer takes the reader back to a particular time. And that time is what went on at the beginning. But in conjunction with him reminding the reader of something that happened and went on at the beginning, he also takes the reader back before the beginning to someone who existed. And uh, the one who existed before the beginning was uh, the Word. And we will find out that the Word here is not just uh, a mere uh, an uh, abstract thing, but the word that we'll find is a real person. And what the writer does is uses something that the audience of that day could associate with. There were those from a Jewish standpoint as well as a Greek standpoint that understood something about the word or words. But to some, words was just a, you know, a mere, you know, saying. Uh, to others, words were force. Words were something that was just put out, as some would even say today, in the atmosphere. But John would bewillow his audience on both sides by not just talking about the word and limiting it just to sayings, but he brings an aspect to the word that uh, his audiences did not readily understand because it was a mystery to them. But he uses something, and, and, and this is common throughout scripture. Jesus even talked in parables, and he used the illustrations that the audience of that day could relate to. But he used the illustrations to bring out a spiritual point. So the Greeks who were caught up in philosophy would understand something about the word, so they thought. But Jesus is going to take what they thought they understood to a whole nother level, a whole nother dimension. John says, that is, that in the beginning was. When he uses the term in the beginning was the word, it is important for us to understand that when he said was the word, he is talking about something that existed and something that will never cease to exist because what was is and that which was and now is will always be now let us look at three significant things that is pointed out here in verse number one. First of all he says in the beginning was the word the second thing and the word was with God so this word that the writer is talking about he makes a distinction between the word and God. <clears throat> and this distinction between the word and God identifies uh, two separate, in that sense, entities or two persons. Then he says, and the word was God. So the word that was God was also in the beginning with God. Now, it is uh, 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 with the preponderance of the evidence throughout reading scripture that we come to understand that the word which was God was uh, also with God. So the Bible helps us understand something about the distinction between the word and God because now we talk about God the Father and the word who was God which according to St. John chapter 1 and verse 14, we know and learn that that word was made flesh. So uh, no one can be God but that which eternally exists because God is an uncreated being. God cannot be created. If God could be created, then he would have to cease to be God and he would have to simply be a created being. 
but God is uncreated. So the word which was before the beginning was God, and that word was with God. So what we have is a functioning relationship here. And uh, there are certain Greek terms, and we won't get into all of that, uh, because some of you still got your mind on shopping, so you're not going to remember the Greek terms anyway. So it becomes important. It is incumbent upon us to understand and pay attention to the text. So the word which was God was also in the beginning with, and with denotes that there is an association, there is a relationship in a sense, and we have to be very careful here, in a, in a limited sense, we would have to say that that word which was with God was also a part of God or part of a relationship. But yet that word which was God was just as much God as the God he was with. So the God he was with, you can never deduce God from being all God all at the same time. So God never ceases to be God. If there was anything that could be subtracted from God, once again, God would have to stop being God. So we have this word which was with God, uh, and he goes on to say, and the word was God. So look at these things. In the beginning again was the word, that word which was in the beginning was with God, in relationship with God. One derivative of a Greek term means that they were face to face. In other words, God faced God. And God, when he faced God, they had communion and they had fellowship together. This God and God, which makes up the one God, even though they are distinct in personality and office, that they work together in everything. And we're going to see that in just a moment. He says in verse number two, well, going back to verse number one, just to um, uh, uh, establish that fact and move on. So the word was in the beginning, and that word was with God, and the word was God. So three significant things which takes us to, uh, to the place where we must understand that what he is referring to, the subject of verse number one, is dealing with something that existed in eternity past. Now, everybody say eternity past if you don't mind. Eternity past, eternity past means in the past without a beginning. I know it messes with my mind too. I'm, I'm human, I only can understand so much about it. But eternity past, we talk a lot of times about eternity future. But when it comes to God, we have to deal with eternity past as well. And eternity past means that you can never go back far enough to trace God and say, all right, this is where God began. Some people want to talk about hundreds of years. Some want to talk about thousands of years. Some want to talk about millions of years. Some want to talk about billions of years. But when it comes to God, you can talk about billions. You can talk about trillions. You can talk about zectillions. You can come up with all kind of words. Zexillions. You can't trace God back to a beginning. And this is why when he refers to the, the beginning, he is talking about the beginning of something. But <laughs> that which was before the beginning, you cannot go back and say, okay, that's where that started. And this is once again what makes God God because God was there when the beginning of the universe came into existence. So the universe has a beginning, which means that it had to be created. And the only thing that can create a universe is an uncreated being. So he goes on to say in verse number two, he was in the beginning with. So he is stressing the relationship. The Bible is uh, very clear when it talks about the word of God becoming flesh. We know him. We had a little exercise earlier at the end of our praise uh, time where I ask you, who are you praising? Okay, who is it that gives us strength to make it? Who did we wake up uh, this morning with our mind on? I would hope we all could say Jesus. 
because after all, Jesus is our keeper. He is our provider. He is our protector. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. Without him, we can do nothing, but through him, we can do all things. I wish I had a better witness than that. I'm ready to pack my bags and go to somewhere to somebody that know what I'm talking about. It is the Lord that kept us all week long. Now, some of us, most of us, we were here last week, but there are many people who started out last week and they are not here in earth to tell the story. But you and I, we're here right now, even in the midst of our press. Yeah, as they sung today, we had to press on, but who are we pressing on with? We were pressing on with Jesus. We couldn't make it by ourselves. We couldn't do this on our own. It is not in man that walks to direct his own footstep, but the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. So it was Jesus that kept us. After all, he promised that I'll walk with you, I'll talk with you, I'll lead you, I'll guide you, I, I will be there for you. Is there anybody that know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had a friend and they said they were a friend and they said that they cared about you, but at some point in time in life, they forsook you on something. They didn't come through. They didn't do what they said they were going to do. And it is not necessarily that it was out of maliciousness, but it's just that the circumstances did not allow them to come through like they said they were going to come through. But how many of us, this Jesus, who is the word of God, made flesh? That there is nothing that can stop him from doing what he said he was going to do. Lord have mercy. Oh, saints used to say things like, he's a mighty good keeper. Is there anybody in the room today that know that Jesus is a mighty good? So uh, the writer here in the Gospel of John goes on to say in verse number three, and I'm just was so anxious to get to verse number three where he says all things were made through him. The King James Version, I'm reading out of the New King James Version, but I believe the King James Version uses the term by him. All things were made through him and or by him, and watch this, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So who is the him? It's helping us understand now that again, the word is not just an abstract force here. The word is a real person. Because now it uses a personal pronoun and calls the word him. And the word who is him uh, denotes that the word who is a him is a real person. Lord have mercy. And that real person was a part of creation. All things were made uh, through him. So this word becomes uh, the vehicle, if you please. This word becomes the instrument, if you please. This word becomes the one, the person, the individual that God brings the universe into existence. Now let us note a couple of things in verse number three. It says all things were made uh, through him. All creation came into existence. Now remember, we already shared with you that which is created can only be created through that which is uncreated or can't be created. Uh, I, I, uh, you are catching this is why I tell people all the time and you here at Power, Hope and Grace you've heard me say this before that uh, no man has the ability to create anything. There ain't now a person that have ever lived and walked the face of this earth outside of the Lord Jesus Christ that have creative powers. So don't let anybody dupe you into thinking that you can create something. You can't create anything. I don't care how much faith you call yourself having. You cannot speak into the atmosphere. You cannot speak into the earth realm. You can't do none of that and create anything. Because if you can create, then that would mean the word that is talked about here had to be you. And the last I look, you and I have a beginning and we have an ending. And there's a dash in between that is called life. Oh, can I get a witness here? 
You know how some of you have been speaking into the atmosphere trying to create your million dollar check and it ain't never came through. Hey, you've been trying to create that brand new car and it ain't never came through. You want a new car, you got to go down to the dealership with some good credit so you can ride off the lot in debt. But it says him who is the word, everything. Did you all catch that? I want you to look at that because it's very, very important. It says all things. So when it comes to God, God is not a thing. God is a real being. Can I get a witness here today? But all things were created by him or through him. Now, uh, uh, um, Paul got uh, the understanding. Paul, God opened up his um, understanding. And Paul says it uh, like this. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 9. And I'll read verse number 8. Verse number 8 says this. To me who am less than the least of all the saints. That's how Paul looked at himself because he was so uh, hurt and, and so much pain in the reminder of his past life and what he did and how he persecuted Christians and hauled them off to jail. But Paul said, uh, I'm the least of all saints. He says, but this grace was given, Lord have mercy, that I should preach among the Gentiles, listen to this, the unsearchable Riches of Christ. So some of you all under the sound of my voice, you are trying to humanly figure out all of what we're talking about, about the word who was with God and the word that was God and uh, how all things were created by it. In your natural mind, you're trying to piece all of that together. But let me tell you something, you'll never be able to piece it all together. Paul himself, who was probably the greatest preacher that ever walked the face of the earth outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, these things are unsearchable in his riches. Now we can study the word of God and we can come up with a certain amount of knowledge, a certain amount of information. But I heard Paul say to the brethren at Rome, and I'm glad Paul wrote it because it blesses me. Paul said, but who have known the mind of God that they may... Lord have mercy. Yeah, come on, I got to find a side. I got to find a side that's on fire for the Lord. Lord have mercy. you sung that song. You still on fire for the Lord, Doc? He said, who have known the mind of God that they may counsel him. Lord have mercy. In other words, God is deep. You can't figure out uh, one who existed from eternity past. And the best we can do is appreciate what he has given us in his word. As we study the word, then he can open up our understanding more and more and a little more. But Paul says it like this, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. He says, let me remind you some saints, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for those that love him. Why? Because his ways are past finding out. They are unsearchable. Now he didn't say stop searching. He said keep searching, but you'll never get to the end of searching. Lord have mercy. And this is why the Greek philosophers, when they tried to figure it out, they tried to come up with some false teaching or some false doctrine that uh, talked about Gnosticism, saying, now, if you believe that God became a man, then that deduces Jesus Christ in his body to somebody evil because matter or that which is physical is uh, evil. So we cannot say Jesus is God. The best we can say is that he may be a created being or he may be a created God, small g. But all you got to do is read 1 John. John debunks all of that when he says in the beginning, Lord have mercy, God did not create a God. Jesus Christ always was, always is, and always will be. Paul says it like this in the book of Galatians. He said, listen, I, I'm, I'm shocked at some of you all because you are so soon removed from what you have been taught about Christ, what you have been taught about salvation. 
See, this is why the Christian church must preach that there's only one way of salvation. And I know we live in a day of tolerance where people are compromising. You know, uh, Farrakhan uh, uh, again uh, talked at uh, the homegoing service of Dr. Clay Evans who invited Farrakhan uh, into the church and that's a disgrace to the church and God rest his soul. And I'm sure that, you know, he, he gonna have to see God uh, for that. But uh, they allowed Farrakhan once again to get up and tell the Christian that Jesus is the Messiah. And they went to clapping and saying amen when Farrakhan said Jesus is the Messiah. And what this shows us is a lack of discernment in the church. Because when Farrakhan says Jesus is the Messiah, he is not saying Jesus is the Messiah according to this book. His Jesus that is the Messiah is nothing more than, I wish the Lord have mercy. I wish there was somebody in here that believed that the Jesus, the Messiah of this book uh, is not just a prophet. And that's what they believe, that Jesus is just a prophet. They do not believe in the virgin birth when Jesus comes in his incarnation to earth and takes on an earth suit. But even though he took on an earth suit, he never stopped being God. He just chose not to tap into his divinity at time as he walked this earth. But when he needed to show that blinded eyes could be opened by the word that was spoken in the beginning that created the universe. How many of us know that the word created the universe? The word can open up a blind eye. Lord have mercy. If the word can create the sun and tell the sun to hang in space on nothing, the word can be preached through the gospel message and change a dark, a dirty, dingy, sinful, stained soul and wash it whiter than snow. That's why the real Jesus of the Bible must be preached. I've told you all some time ago, don't play with me, don't, don't, don't play with me. I only got one soul and this soul is gonna spend eternity somewhere. And where it's going to spend eternity is based upon what we do here in this earth. So when I come to church, preach to me Jesus. Remind me of who he is. Don't bring another gospel. Lord have mercy. Don't bring uh, uh, this uh, tolerance or this ecumenical uh, thing that is being introduced to the church of the living God. Preach Jesus Christ and him uh, crucified. Our Savior, our Deliverer, our King, our Emancipator, the one that is the star of this book from Genesis to Revelation that ultimately didn't wait for anybody else to testify, but he said, I'll testify myself. I am Alpha. I am Omega. I am the first. I am the last. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am him who was. forevermore and if he created all things he can take power over death Lord have mercy death can't kill God I said death can't kill God it was Jesus who died uh, when uh, his spirit was separated from uh, that earth suit Lord have mercy but God reigns on the throne if God would have died one moment, Satan would have taken control of the universe and you and I wouldn't be here today to tell the story. I'm just trying to remind you that the reason you're here right now, because the law has been on your side. I already tried to tell you that. Some of you all appreciate that. Some of you are still trying to figure it out. Trying to say, I did this. This, this was my skill. No, no, it wasn't. Your skill didn't get you nowhere but in a stressed out situation. Can I get a witness here? Well, you had to start popping pills and, and going to the doctor and, 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 and get medication. And, you know, the doctor said, you ran out of medication. You lied and said, yeah, doc, because you wanted more so you can double up. Oh, but Jesus is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker. Do I have a witness here today? He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask 
or even think. Now, how can he do that? He's the creator of the universe. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, bless his adorable name. So, so, so Paul said that in verse 9 of Ephesians 3, and to make all to see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God. Watch this. Who created all things through Jesus Christ. We sing that song, and I was just listening to it yesterday, and I love that song. He knows my name. <laughs> you know the implication of that song when it says he knows my name? You and I, we are identified by name. My wife know my name. And there's some things about me that my wife know that none of y'all know. And you won't know. <laughs> Hello, somebody. There, God knows your name. God knows everything about There's nothing hid from him. So this God that knows everything, and he brings everything into existence through Jesus Christ, do we suppose that he would be limited in doing for us that which is exceeding abundantly above all? The human mind is limited. There are things that we may need at any particular time that we're going through so tough that we don't even recognize we need it. I pause there because I needed that to sink in for a moment for what I'm getting ready to say. There are times we can be going through so tough we don't even realize we need certain things. But even in our toughness, we might simply say, God help. And you know what the Lord does? Oh, this is going to bless you right here. You know what the Lord does? He will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask. Okay, all right, three of us got that. Lord have mercy. That, that, we didn't even think to ask it, but the Lord who knows us, who created us in his image and in his likeness, he know that even when we didn't ask it, <laughs> he knows how to give it. So there have been some healings that probably have taken place. You didn't even know you needed healing. But the Lord <laughs> came through. Watch it. I feel something kicking in now. Lord have mercy. The Lord knows. So uh, let us get back to, I can close out here. St. John chapter number one. There are other passages that let us know about the creative powers of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some even among the so-called Christian church that has a problem with the deity of Jesus. All I would ask for anybody who have a problem with the deity of Jesus, just simply read this passage just as it's written. You cannot come away from the Bible not believing that Jesus is God when you read this passage. As you search the scriptures, you'll find that within the Godhead, and the Bible says in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And what does that mean? Well, according to St. John chapter 1, verse 18, no man has seen God. He is invisible at any time, but the only begotten of the Father. He has declared him, revealed him, made him known. So the Father manifests himself through his Son, Jesus Christ. Then Jesus Christ turns around in St. John 15, 16, and 17 and says... I am going to go away. But when I go away, I will not leave you as children without parents. I will send to you another comforter. Another comforter like unto me. And when he comes, so we have the word, who is he? We have God, who is he? And we have he which is going to come, which is a comforter, the Holy Spirit. He is he. So what do we have? We have three he's. The father is he. 
The Son is He. The Holy Spirit is He. Yet they are distinct in office and function, but they are all one God. Pastor, break that down. I can't. Other than telling you what the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. You can't split God up. You can't divide God. You can't rip God apart. You can't tear him in three pieces. That's why Jesus can say, when you see me, you see the Father. Why? Because I'm all God, and the Father is all God, and the Holy Ghost is all God. And from the mind, if we preach any other gospel, then we are violating the very word of the oracles of God. John said in 1 John chapter number 2, he says, listen, you have got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God that has come in the flesh. And he said, if anybody does not believe that, John said, let them be a curse and don't even bless them. And you know what that meant to them back in the day. Don't even be hospitable. Don't even invite them in for a steak dinner. I know it's tight, but it's right. We either going to believe the book or we're not going to believe the book. Now, we can thank God for grace and mercy because God is opening up people's eyes. But friend of mine, if we don't believe that Jesus Christ is the one that this book declared, the Bible said, let them be a curse. I know that's deep that thing boggled my mind for years but I knew it was there it was there all the time did y'all hear what I said it was there I didn't write the book oh bless his name so read St. John 1 word Get down to verse number four and we close out. In him was life. Woo. And the life was the light of men. In him was life. And once again, this word was denotes that he did not evolve into obtaining or coming into life as the creator. This is telling us he's the source of life. Mm, 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 mm. And that life was the light of men. And what John is really telling us is he is really using Old Testament language to help us to understand that Jesus is God. For Psalms 1, 27, I believe it is, or the 27th Psalm, remind us the Lord is my salvation. Okay, come on, Charlie. <laughs> and my life. So Jesus, who has life, what that means is he is the source of all life. Doug, when you get a chance, read St. John 4 and 5. St. John 4 and 5 is going to help us understand that. He's the source of life. He didn't obtain it. He is it. I told you, that's why the old saints say, say some, of them, some of them sayings may sound a little country, a little, you know, but when they say take the Lord along with you, everybody say with you. I know you're educated and got degrees and all of that stuff, but you got to take the Lord along with you. They knew what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when the Lord is with you, that means you got life in you. St. John 10.10 10 reminds us that Jesus said, I come that you might have life. I'm gone, y'all. And that you might have it more abundantly. God help us to have a people in this congregation and understand what they got. If you got Jesus, 
Lord have mercy. You got life in you. And that life in you is eternal life. And the grave can't rob you of that life. I wish I had a witness here today. They can roll you down the aisle, but it can't rob you of the life you got in you. Can I get a witness? Because if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. You got life in you because you got Jesus. When you got Jesus, you got life. So you can tell the devil, devil, go ahead, do whatever you're going to do. Throw the kitchen sink at me. Uh, my life is here in God, in Christ. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you win. Tell them if you're born again, you win. Come on, look at somebody like you mean it. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, if you got Jesus, you on the winning side. If you got Jesus, you're coming out on top. If you got Jesus, you got the word of life. If you got Jesus, you got Zoe, you got power. If you got Jesus, go shopping after our 3.30 service. Let us remember what Christmas is all about. Christmas is not about Barbie and Ken. Christmas is not all about a new Nintendo game or whatever they got. I know Nintendo old. I don't know what else they got out. Christmas is not all about how many gifts I can get. Christmas is not all about how much food I can eat. But Christmas is about God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son. That who, whosoever believe in him would not have to perish but could have the best gift of all. And that's eternal life through and by way of the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you have not been born again, let me introduce you to a Savior from eternity past who stepped in time in a body designed by God, walked the dusty shores of Galilee, opened up the blinded eyes, caused the lame to walk, fed a multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread, stopped by Jordan at the age of 30 years old, stepped in the water, was baptized by John, came up out of the water of the Holy Ghost, descended upon him in a bodily form of a dove, and the father cried out from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Do I have a witness here? Getting Jesus is the best gift you can ever have. Getting Jesus is worth all your charge card can buy. Because your charge card can't buy you eternal life. But I'm glad that Jesus, he lived and he loved me. He died and he saved me. He was buried and carried my sin far away. He rose and justified me. Now I'm free, yeah, I'm free, I'm free, how long preacher, I'm free forever, no longer bound, I'm free, no longer chained, I'm free, no longer lost, I'm free, no longer blind, I'm free, what do you call that? I heard somebody say, amazing grace. Woo! How sweet the sound that saved 
a wretch like me? Are you glad about it? Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love my Lord? I want to know, do you love Jesus? I want to know, do you love the Lord? If you love him, put your hands together and thank God for the best gift that have ever invaded the universe. Yes! Stepped out from glory, wrapped himself in flesh, said, I'll die for the sins of the world. I'll shed my blood that you might have a right to the tree of life. That's why I praise him. I said, that's why I praise him when nobody else can help. Love! Some of you may already have on your pre-Christmas outfit, but there ain't nothing I got that's too good to praise my Lord. I heard the choir say, I know he's all right. if you can stand to your feet if you can hallelujah I'm gonna let you go thank you Lord This is for you that don't know him. The Bible is very clear. He is the life giver. In him was life. That life was the light of men. The Bible it says, and this is deep, and I don't have time to talk about it, but it says, and the light shined in the darkness. King James Version said, but the darkness could not comprehend it. You know what that is actually saying? Sometimes not our initial first thought. What that is saying, when he came into the world, the world couldn't deny who he was. They did, but they couldn't. That's why everything was a false accusation. Jesus said, you don't believe me for what I look like, look at what I did. And ever since he came in my life, I can't deny him. I said, I can't deny him. Looked at my hands and my hands look new. Looked at my feet and yeah, yeah. If you don't know him, this is the best gift that you can ever have. And Jesus said, believe on me. He told his disciples, as the scriptures have said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters that water that represents the Holy Spirit it'll give you life it'll change you 
He says on another occasion, he says, you won't ever have to thirst again. You won't have to thirst. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. This is the way that Christ and the Father comes to us by way of the Holy Spirit. If you're here today and you're not a recipient of that, you have not been born again, you can come to this altar and we'll pray with you. We have ministers who are ready and able to share with you and minister to you and answer any questions that you may have. 